Hello, my name is Isaiah, and in this video I'm going to cover the custom curve profiles that you can find in any Pascal GPU. Now to start off with that is that any Pascal GPU, which is the 10 series, so it's uh, going to be 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti, 1070 Ti, uh, 1050, 1050 Ti, all the Pascal video cards have a function that's called boost. And I covered this in my last video. It allows the card to kind of overclock itself and get it to the maximum potential it can without the user touching it. Now, that has its benefits. I only covered how it can be not so useful. You can check out my other videos about Boost 3.0 and just a basic overclocking guide. Now, this one's covering the custom curve for really any uh, video card if you watched my overclocking guides before. All I did was a basic edition, and people... I got some comments asking, why don't you cover the curve? It, it's kind of a more advanced feature, so I'm going to do it right now. I'll tell you right now, I had personally not very good luck with it. It's actually more of a hassle to use than just leaving things alone. But people requested it, so I'm going to show you. Now, if you're using MSI Afterburner, you're going to have to go ahead and unlock the core voltage first. So if you go to the little gear icon you can go right here and it says unlock core voltage you have to un you have to check mark that and then sometimes it won't unlock until you change what uh, the reference thing is I've had good luck with standard MSI really I don't know what these mean all I know is that not all of them actually unlock the voltage so I'm not saying I know everything I'm just telling you that pretty much you just have to pick one of these and see if it unlocks. If it does unlock, you'll see the slider be able to move back and forth. And setting it to 100% is not going to cause any damage. People uh, believe that, just like the older cards, when you set things to maximum, that was the end of the card. You know, these cards are so locked down, NVIDIA has tried so hard to make it user friendly that you cannot really damage the cards. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying it's very, very unlikely. Uh, just like any of my warnings I give, is that overclocking is at your own risk but uh, as far as MSI or as far as NVIDIA goes the Pascal GPU is quite hard to cause any serious harm to it now there is a way to do it but that's for a different video so what you want to do is if you watched my past video about boost 3.0 you'd already understand uh, the core voltage power limit and temperature limits so I'm going to cover that in the other video so if you want to know about that go check that link below or click on the other video. Now, now we're past that. What you want to do is that if you have any profile set, uh, you just want to go ahead and just revert back to defaults. We'll start fresh, all of us together. The second thing you want to do is I like to do this. So, basically, what the curve allows you to do, it allows you to see pretty much in real time what the video card is doing. So you have a curve. The curve is based on how much voltage the voltage applies equals the frequency of the video card. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, that's kind of what the graph showed in the, in the presentations that NVIDIA gave is that before it was kind of like a straight linear line. You couldn't do anything if you wanted, you know, 1 volt, you got 2,000 megahertz. If you wanted 1.5 volt, you got 3,000 megahertz or pretty much a generic line. You couldn't do anything about it. So what this allows you to do is technically edit every single point here. Now, MSI Afterburner kind of, like I said, I didn't have good luck with this program. Uh, there's fine amount, a finite amount of points because voltage is more finite. You can't, you can't change the voltage between each point um, just because it's not user-friendly to do that. Uh, you can move the whole shift. So if you hold down shift and click on any of these points, you can move the whole thing up and down. And you see on the other slider, it goes up and down. So I'm if I went up here, which will surely cl crash my video card, it's telling me at the lowest voltage, it's going to start at 2,000 megahertz. And at the highest voltage, which is about right here, it's going to be at 2,300 megahertz. Now, what I do is that you, when you have this open, you can see the custom curve. So what I like to do is I like to set everything to what I was going to do originally. So if I raise my voltage, and actually I have a profile here. Let's see here. That's my profile. So I know from past overclocking guides and just using it myself, this is 100% stable all day long, 24 hours a day. I can play games, no artifacts, no crashes. At about 
1.63 volts, which is not reflecting right here. Oh, there it goes. Um, is the maximum this card can potentially do. I can go higher voltage. I haven't seen a benefit of all, oh, I guess heat, but I put a more voltage into it and it still kind of sits on the 2000 megahertz line. This video card limitation is about 2023 20, or so is where the limit of this card is. And I don't want to crash this card during the recording of this video because I'm using the GeForce experience here. Now that I have my maximum what I can do is I can do small tweaks. So say that is at almost two gigahertz and I just want a little bit more, what I can do is I can click on this number and I can slightly move it up and you see how the number on those side reflects differently. So if I just want a few more megahertz, say I just want like five, ten more megahertz, you hit apply and then supposedly it goes up. So there you go. I just gained ten megahertz. That's that's the fine tuning of the curvature. If you think your card can get the extra little megahertz tweaks out of it, so you want five more megahertz, then this curve is going to be what you need. Now, that's not going to stop it from downclocking. As you see, it's jumped down from 212 to like 15, and then it goes back up. And it's because you have the limitations I talked about in Boost. You have voltage limitations, you have power limits, you have temperature limits. All that stuff applies to this, so it doesn't matter how much you tweak it, if you have too much heat, you have too much power draw, any of those is going to cause it to downclock. And that's just the nature of Boost 3.0 and you can't change that. So I hope this helps you uh, fine tweak your video card. Like I said, it's not something I use just because the extra 1 or 2 megahertz I do get out of the profile tweaking actually causes more problems for me than it's worth. Like I said, sometimes you might think it's perfectly fine, you go play a game, it crashes, and the next thing you know you have to start back over. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for more videos like this in the future.